Would you like to see something very interesting? Come with me. Last year, about this time, I grew my sweet potato slips in this container. So now we're talking about a year ago. And to my surprise, I am having new vines to grow. So there is a sweet potato down in here in this soil somewhere that has survived for a year. That is pretty amazing. So I'm gonna let these continue to grow and let's see how well they'll come along as the weeks and the months go by. Let's build your garden. Grow food as much as you can, as often as you can, and as long as you can. Hi, I'm Annette and welcome to Kitchen Garden Farmhouse. Today, we're gonna to be going over some amazing ways to start your sweet potato slips the easy way Let's get started. The humble sweet potato is loaded with antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals, and it is considered by many a superfood. Along with that, it is a great crop to grow in your survival garden because of the calories it contains and also it stores very well. Plus, the leaves are edible. Growing sweet potatoes is pretty much a two-step process. First, we have to grow our slips, then we take those slips and plant them, and we grow our sweet potatoes. However, it takes a while for the slips to grow, so we need to allow ourselves anywhere from six to eight weeks in growing those slips, getting ready for the warm weather to come around, so when it does, we're ready to plant those slips outdoors somewhere to start growing our sweet potatoes because it's gonna take anywhere from 90 to 120 days to grow our sweet potatoes depending on which variety you get. Now, I live in Central Florida, and right now it's the month of February. We're having lots of warm weather once the sun comes up, so it's okay for me to plant mine in a container and let it be outdoors. However, if you are in a cooler climate, you may want to consider either growing them in a greenhouse or maybe getting a heating mat to put your sweet potatoes on so it can give it the warmth it needs to begin to sprout and to grow those slips. I'm checking the pH of the sphagnum peat moss. It is about 6.2. It has been pre-moistened with water. Nothing else has been added. It's so important to have the pH correct because if it's off, the plants will struggle to grow properly. To grow my sweet potato slips, I'm gonna use two ingredients, sphagnum peat moss and perlite. Now, instead of sphagnum peat moss, you can use coconut choir. Coconut choir carries a pH that's neutral around seven, whereas the sphagnum peat moss is a little bit acidic. Now today, this batch here is running at about 6.2, which is great because your sweet potatoes likes a pH somewhere between five and six. So I'm just gonna mix these two together. And I am not gonna add any fertilizers to this mix because the sweet potato, the flesh of the sweet potato is gonna give those vines all the nutrients it's gonna to need to start with to grow and to get started. In this seed starting mix today, I have used three gallons of peat moss and one and a half gallons of perlite. I'm going to use this little tote here to grow some of my sweet potato slips in. The depth of this tote is six inches. I will not be drilling any holes in this tote because if I just be careful not to overwater, it's not necessary. Plus, if you take it indoors and you have it on a heat mat, you're not going to want this to have holes in it getting water everywhere. And so if you think about it, when the sweet potato is placed in a jar, is completely immersed in water, the tip of it. So it would be fine, just don't overwater it. I'm going to be planting two varieties today. These are the Mirisaki Japanese sweet potatoes. Actually, I was able to buy these locally. So all you do is just make a little indention in the soil and set it down there and completely cover it up. Don't have any of it exposed. And then if you have to, Put a little bit more soil on top to make sure it's completely covered. And there you go, those are planted. It's so easy and it's just as simple as that. Now once again, this is one of the containers I normally grow a lot of my sweet potato slips in every year. And as I had mentioned before, I have two that has survived for one year that's re-sprouting. I'm gonna leave these here and see what happens. And even though this container is taller, it only has about six to seven inches of soil in it. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more of my fresh starting mixed soil here on top. And I got these from the Publix grocery store. They are certified organic. It did not say the variety, but I'm thinking these are the Beauregard sweet potatoes. And so I'm just going to just dig a little hole here, like the other ones, and just set it in there and completely cover it with soil. Now, when you're planting your sweet potatoes, you can actually put them quite close together. It's fine. And once again, I'm not adding any fertilizers in this mix at this time. Now, because this container already has some soil in it, and it was a little bit on the dry side, I'm going to go ahead and then water this in some to give it some moisture that it needs. So you know it's always good to mulch, no matter what we're planting. This right here is pine needles, so you can use straw or you can use ground up leaves, whatever you have that will work for you to help retain moisture. The same thing with this container here. This is the one that I held the Mirasaki Japanese sweet potatoes planted in. Okay, so it took no time at all to plant those potatoes to start my sweet potato slips. Now don't forget your heat mats. I have a large one. These are gonna really be helpful for those that lives in colder climates that you need to go ahead and get your sweet potato slips started um, coming up soon, depending on what area you live in. So just remember, somewhere around eight weeks before your last frost date, you want to think about getting those potatoes in a container of some sort. Now, if you're going to use a heat mat, definitely using a smaller container like this is going to be to your advantage because obviously if I needed to have the heat mat, the large blue container would not be practical. So planting them in a small container is great. You can plant them very close together when you're just trying to do your slips they will grow just fine. Is there any questions that you may have about growing and getting started with your sweet potato slips that I did not cover? Please leave comments below and ask it and I will get back to you promptly on those questions. Now coming up, as my sweet potato slips grow and they get ready for the next step, I'm gonna be making more videos about the growth and the maintenance and getting them replanted in containers. And that is what I'm planning on this year. I'm going to be having a container garden. So mostly all of my stuff that I will be planting for this season will be in containers of some sort. If you have found this video to be helpful and would like to see more like it, please take a moment to subscribe if you have not done so already. Giving the video a thumbs up, leaving a comment, and sharing it with others will help the channel Kitchen Garden Farmhouse to grow. Thank you, and I will see you in the next video.